Hello and welcome to Oak Hills Church. We're so glad that you're with us today, whether you're watching online or here with us in person. We're just happy you joined us. And uh, we want you to know that it doesn't matter where you are in your faith journey, you can start right here. Uh, if you are a guest with us, we would love to get to know you though. And so if you're watching online, you just go to our, our homepage of our website, click on the Start Here, Stay Connected button and introduce yourself that way. Uh, but if you're with us in person, uh, as soon as the service is over, head right outside these doors. If you take a left, there's a resource center there and there's cards with a bucket. Fill out that card, real easy way to introduce yourself and drop that card in the bucket. And we would just greatly appreciate that because we want to know that you are here. Uh, also, we want you to get connected to the great community we have here. And we have some uh, great events coming up just for that. Uh, whether you're new or you've been coming for a long time, we wanna invite you to our church picnic and outdoor family movie night. Uh, on August 27th, it's a Friday night dinner and a movie. Uh, starting at 6.30, we have our church picnic. We're gonna provide the dinner all you got to do is bring your chair or a blanket to sit on and then make sure you bring uh, family, friends, maybe a neighbor. Uh, think about people maybe that are on a faith journey. Think about people that maybe need a home church. We want you to bring them to this one. Uh, it'll be a great time of community, food, and hanging out together. Uh, so we would love for you to be there. We just encourage you to sign up for this event. It's free, but we want you to know that you're coming. Then, right after the church picnic is done, we start our outdoor family movie night. And so we want to encourage you to be a part of this. We're going to be showing a movie. There'll be some fun games and activities beforehand. And uh, once again, bring a chair, a blanket, uh, and come hang out with us. This event is free as well, but we just want you to invite people to the, both of these events. Maybe you can only make one. Maybe you can make the other. Maybe you can make both. Either way, we want to see you there. And so we hope to see you there on August 27th. Uh, on August 21st, we also have a pause and prayer event. Uh, this last month, we did a, an event where we came and gathered at Oak Hills Church and we sought the Lord through prayer and worship and just uh, asked God for direction. And it was an incredible time. Uh, and so this month, we are not gathering together as a church, but we encourage you on the 21st of August uh, to take a, some time fast a meal and just pray and ask God to uh, God to be present, God to give direction in your life, in your family, in your community, in your neighborhood, at Oak Hills Church. Um, we are just looking forward and believing that God is going to do incredible things as we pray. Uh, finally, in the Bible, it says that uh, those who are generous will prosper. Those who look to refresh others will be themselves refreshed. We want to thank you for being a generous, a refreshing, a giving church. If you'd like to give, you can give online, on the app, or send a check into Oak Hills Church. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, wherever you are right now, um, you don't have to, but I'd maybe encourage you to stand uh, or or even sit up or whatever posture engages you in what we're about to do. Because I think anytime we're kind of watching a screen, it can be very easy to just kind of passively engage. But, uh, but I really encourage you to kind of press in, lean in, stand up, or, or just kind of uh, refuse to be apathetic uh, in, this, in this moment. Um, I'm going to read a, a little bit of Psalm 27 as we begin. Uh, I have been sort of un informally studying the life of David, uh, reading a lot of his psalms and reading some of his story, his journey uh, as a shepherd and then becoming king and, and just who he is. And it's just so endlessly inspiring. And uh, I think there's something about the life of David that reveals to us uh, how we are meant to live. I think there's something about how he lived, his heart after God, the way that he was able to pour out and express his heart in worship that made him, uh, that really allowed him to become the effective leader and king that, that he was. And I'm not saying that every musician or every worship leader should be king. I would make a terrible king. But I think there's something about his heart and his posture and his pursuit of God that allowed him to be so, uh, so close to him that he was able to hear from heaven and be able to lead and live so effectively. Uh, and so I just want to read some of Psalm 27 because uh, I think a lot of these principles, if we take them on, there's, there, I think it's just a beautiful way for us to model our lives. It says, says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path. And I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Let's pray. So, Lord, we come into your presence today. We wait upon you. We acknowledge you with all that we have, with all that we are. We celebrate you. And we wait upon you. We remember your goodness, your faithfulness, your kindness. Let our hearts overflow with gratitude to you as we lift up your name today. Let's sing, I have heard a sound. I have heard a sound coming on the wind, changing hearts and minds, healing brokenness. I feel generation breaking through despair I hear a generation full of faith declare and our song it will be out of the darkness we will rise and see darkness 
discipline Lord and so Lord anything within our hearts that does not look like you or does not represent you Lord I pray that you would refine us that you would prune us that you would speak into our lives challenging us allowing us to grow into the maturity that you long for us to live in our lives here on this earth filled with purpose unwavering hope and a steadfast devotion to you with everything we are with all that is within us that we would praise you with our lives Lord we thank you we praise you in Jesus holy name in Jesus name and everyone together said Hey everyone, thanks again for joining us today for our online worship service. We're so glad you're with us. You know, we've been in this series called The Life, and the series is basically about, you know, what kind of life can we expect when we follow Jesus? And so far, we've talked about the called life, the accepted life, and now today, I want to talk to you about the led life or being led by the Holy Spirit. We can expect when we follow Jesus to have our life be led by the Holy Spirit. When my daughter was in grade school, my wife Melody and I went to one of those parent-teacher conferences. And if you have children, and especially in grade school, you know what that's like. You go there hoping you're going to get a positive comment and nice things said about your child. And, and of course, the teacher did say those things. There was one cautionary word that she gave us. She said, you know, um, your daughter, Allie, is doing great in school, but I would warn you about one thing. She has a friend, and um, her friend sometimes is a distraction for her. Her friend will sometimes either get done early with her work or maybe not complete her work. 
but then she'll begin to distract Allie. And you might want to just try to kind of keep her away because her friend, her friend's name happened to be Lucy, said her friend is leading her astray sometimes. I think we'd all be surprised at how much we are influenced and consequently led by others. <clears throat> Politicians, celebrities, authors, uh, star athletes, social media influencers, CEOs of companies, television shows, and the influence of television and movies. I think we'd be surprised at how that leads us and influences us. A couple of months ago, I was watching one of my favorite shows, which is Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. And I happened to notice, actually Melody and I both noticed, this uh, sport coat that Jerry Seinfeld was wearing. And we both said, boy, we like that, that sport coat. Well, a couple of weeks later, I happened to, to buy one that looked almost exactly like that. So here I was being influenced by a TV personality, a comedian. We're all influenced. We're all led to a certain degree by others. Some lead us astray, like Al Allie with, uh, with her friend Lucy, and some lead us well, like uh, Jerry Seinfeld, helping me to look even more handsome than I already am. But how many of us actually give this some thought and really think about this? How many of us ask the good questions? Questions like, who does influence me? Who leads me to do and say and think the way that I do? And are they a good influence? Is this person or this group that's influencing me and leading me, are they, are they good people to be leading me? So let's consider what the Apostle Paul wrote about having a led life or a, a life led by the Holy Spirit. This is Ephesians 5.15. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. And then a verse later in verse 17, Ephesians 5.17. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand, here's the line, what the Lord wants you to do. So here the Apostle Paul tells us that we should be careful how we live. And he gives us in this passage we're going to be reading today, a lot of like do's and don'ts. And a lot of people don't, I don't like all the do's and don'ts. But he does it in a way here that helps us to kind of define what to do and what not to do. So, for example, he says, don't, don't live like fools. Do live wisely. Don't act thoughtlessly. Do understand, and here's the line, what the Lord wants you to do. Two important truths there, okay? And here's the implication. First of all, God has stuff that he wants us to do. See, some of us think, oh, it's just me, just little old me. I, I can't imagine that God would have something that God wants me to do, or God's just too busy, a lot of things happening in the universe. No, no. Paul is saying, God has stuff. <laughs> Be it, pay attention to what God wants you to do. And the second thing, that we see here is that God will then lead us in those things. Paul then tells us how we can follow God's lead. From the passage of Scripture, let's take a look. And here's the first one. He says, make the most of every opportunity. Ephesians 5.16, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. You know, when we read this, these two words, evil days, it's kind of instinctive. To, to think like defensively. I need to be careful. It's dangerous out there. Our world has become so uh, evil. I need to just be careful. Paul's intention here is, act is actually like the exact opposite of that. Don't get defensive because the days are evil. Instead, look for every opportunity to do good, to bless, to change things to overcome evil, in a sense, get offensive, not defensive. So here's the thing. The evil days that we Christ followers live in, and everyone lives in, in the day in which we live, uh, if you're a Christ follower, it actually gives all of us the opportunity to show the goodness and the grace of Jesus. 
And we need to see the evil not only as, you know, demonic spirits that we do warfare against, and spiritual warfare is a part of what we do as Christians. That's a whole other message. But we also need to take, and this is what I want you to just think about, we need to take every opportunity to fight the evil systems that are in our world. Take advantage, you know, these evil systems, for example, that take advantage of the poor, that perpetuate racial injustice, that allow for human trafficking. Now, these, of course, are big, huge, global evils, problems. And it's so easy for us to wonder, you know, what can I do about these evils? What can I possibly do about these problems, these evils in the world? Well, the thing is, listen now, uh, the thing is to let the Holy Spirit lead us and show us the opportunities that are right in front of us. The ones that are right in our world, the ones that we can deal with as the Holy Spirit leads us. Let's look at what Paul wrote next year. He said this, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, we see here Paul gives us some do's and don'ts. Don't be filled with wine. Do be filled with the Holy Spirit. What does Paul mean here? Well, clearly, we all know that getting drunk all the time on wine will eventually ruin our life. Now, the broader idea here, though, from Paul is this. Don't respond to evil in the world by self-medicating. Some respond to evil in the world. We talked about this. With all the evil in the world, they respond with fear and kind of being inward, so they stay inside. It's evil out there. I need to be careful. Others respond by deadening their senses, so they don't have to feel it. And others still respond by just kind of disengaging. You know, it's just too much. I I just can't take it anymore. So I'm going to disengage with socially and with the culture. But Paul says, don't do any of those things. Instead, in the face of evil in the world, take the opportunity to be alert and led by the Holy Spirit who will reveal to us, as we do this, as we're alert and being led by the Holy Spirit, reveal to us the opportunities that are right in front of us to bring hope and the goodness of God into this evil world. In our last series, uh, which was called Side Effects, I talked about the side effect of compassion. And I said that, you know, the side effect of following Jesus is that we'll we'll start to develop this concern for the sufferings and misfortunes of others. I said one sign that we're suffering from the side effect of compassion is that we'll start to give away time to people. We'll feel uh, what's going on in their life and we'll want to give them time. So I suggested, what if we all consider giving just 1% of our awake time each day, 10 minutes a day, about to just show compassion. So today, what if we included, what if we combined in that 10 minutes a day, taking the opportunity, as Paul says here, taking the opportunity to bring hope and healing and the goodness of God into our evil world. You know, if we look, if we let the Holy Spirit lead us, we will spot it all around us and the Holy Spirit will show us how we can do that we can, how we can make a difference. I was uh, studying some of these like big problems in the world. And one of them was just studying up on human trafficking. And if you've studied, you know how prevalent it is in our world. It's, it's just awful. I mean, it's terrible. And there was a video um, from the BBC where this woman from the Philippines who was very poor, uh, she took a job in a European country, I'm not sure where, uh, but she took a job as a maid, and she, she was flown over. She went into this home with this couple, and she said pretty quickly she realized um, she was being trafficked. She became a slave. They took her passport. They didn't let her communicate with her family back home. Um, they, they, she had no money, 
She was limited in her language. And so for over three years, she talked about how she, she just cleaned the house, how she cooked, how she served this couple. She didn't have a bedroom. She had to sleep on the couch. She had to get up early and make up the couch. She had to go to bed late. She had just this one area where she kept her things. And she said it was just, just awful. And as she was talking about this, she was tearing up and she was crying. Um, and she, she got a break. This couple wanted to move to the UK, and they had to apply for a visa. And so they just gave her this form and said, now we want you to apply for a visa as well. And so as she was going through the form, she had learned the language enough where she could do it. Uh, this couple didn't know it, but there was actually a box that she could check that was a helpline. That if for some reason you need help in filling out this, if there's something going on in your life and you need help, you check here. The authorities came and were able to free her up. She's now working for a salary. She's sending money home to her family. Again, she kind of cried with joy that she was free. You know, someone brought God's goodness into the middle of that evil that was happening in that woman's life. And probably for many, many others. The truth is, we can do stuff like that too as the Holy Spirit leads us. Maybe not changing a visa application, but you know, maybe it's just, um, I mean, there are all kinds of examples. Changing the way someone is treated in, in your life or in your neighborhood, or just, just actually actively saying, this is something that's wrong. This is something that's evil. And the leading of the Holy Spirit is leading me to take a step to stop this evil and bring the goodness and the grace of God into this situation. When we follow Jesus, we can expect to live a led life. We do that by allowing the Holy Spirit to show us the opportunities to bring God's goodness into the darkness and evil in our world. Stuff that's right in front of us as the Holy Spirit leads. Now, and here's a key to being filled with the Holy Spirit, because that's the key here, isn't it? We're talking about having a led life. Well, the Holy Spirit leads us. Well, what's the key to that happening, really? Well, here's what Paul says. Give thanks for everything to God. This is a key. It's this idea of gratitude and giving thanks. Let's read it. Ephesians 5, 19 and 20. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let's remember now what Paul said just before these words about giving thanks, right? This is what he said. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he gave some insight on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What we just read by what? Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For me, when I spend an hour with all of you in a worship service together, I find that, that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm way more in tune to the leading of the Spirit in my life. But, you know, if I'm not in a, a worship service setting, or attending online, or if I go a long time without my personal time with God, here's what happens to me. The voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to my spirit just grows weaker and weaker. This is why it's so important that we prioritize our connection and commitment to our local church. Uh, you know, just to be with other committed Christian people, other healthy believers, and then to make sure that, that we're just having that devotional time in prayer and reading the Bible, and we're connected to God. Now note that the context here from Paul is he's writing to like the corporate gathering of the church in Ephesus. Paul says to them, and we can you know, know that it's, he's saying to us, when you gather together, for your worship services. Make sure you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves 
and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Here's what I want you to note right now. Just one line. Make music to the Lord in your hearts. Make music to the Lord in your hearts. Sometimes we make music to the Lord in our heads, from our heads. If we're singing, uh, if we're praying, if we're reading the Bible, if we're listening to a sermon, the music, um, the emotion, the feeling is just not there. It's kind of just all in our heads. It's like we hear a sermon, we might even sing a song, but there's no connection from our heart. Paul says, make sure when you come together for worship, you make music to the Lord in your hearts. Make sure you worship, you sing, you pray, you receive the word of God deep into your heart, deep into your soul, so that you get in touch with the Holy Spirit of God, so that you're in tune with the voice of the Holy Spirit and his leading. You know, lately I've been thinking about the manifest presence of God a lot. And this is just the simple idea that God is everywhere and God is aware of us, but we're not always aware of God. But when we tune in, you know, when we worship, when we pay attention, His presence then is manifested. God was always there. We just didn't, we weren't aware. But when we tune in, we become aware of the presence of God. And I've been praying that, that all of us would experience this as we gather together for worship as a local church. Um, we had a prayer meeting a couple weeks ago, and I talked about three goals that I have for our church going into the fall and, and then into the winter. And one of those goals was just presence, that as we gather together, and we begin to worship as we read the word, as we pray, as we hear the message, that we would all together experience and sense the manifest presence of the Lord together. Um, now, when I've been working on this message, I've been kind of uh, taking another little angle on that, and I've been praying that we as a church, as we gather, would have ears to hear the leading of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives. You know how it is when you, <clears throat> you go into a room and, I don't know, there's a party or it's a, it's a gathering, maybe it's a church, maybe it's some social gathering. There are all kinds of people there and um, <clears throat> kinds of people talking and there's voices. But then um, your spouse comes in or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or maybe even just a good friend, just somebody that you are very close to. And you've all experienced this. Um, among all those voices, <laughs> when that person speaks, you know, you know that voice. And it's not just in your head, because you're very close to that person. And something happens beyond your head, it goes into your heart, and you connect with that close relationship and, and the intimacy you have with that person. And that's what I've been praying for all of us at Oak Hills Church, that we'd be people who are able to, in the midst of all the chaos and all the words and all the communication that's going on, everything that's going on, that when the voice of the Holy Spirit speaks, we'd know right away. We'd be familiar. It wouldn't just be in our head, head knowledge. Go right to our heart, deep into our soul. Today we've uh, talked about how we as followers of Jesus can expect to live a led life. One led by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, here's just a quick review. First of all, it means that the Lord has stuff that he wants us to do. No, the Lord isn't too busy with the universe. Or the, you're not too little or insignificant. I'm not too little or insignificant uh, for the Lord to have a plan for us. As we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the call of God on our life. There's stuff the Lord wants each of us to do. And secondly, uh, it means that 
We should fill our life with holy stuff, not unholy stuff. Let's not disengage just because of all that's going on in the world and the frustration. Let's not medicate our lives. Let's not fill our lives with unholy things. Let's make sure we guard what comes into our mind and our spirit and our life and be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And then third, here's what it means. Look for every opportunity to be led by the Lord in this evil day. Instead of backing off, look for every opportunity to bring God's goodness and grace into that situation. And then, of course, what we just talked about This last point, put your heart and emotion into your worship. Make music in your heart to the Lord. So right now, would you just pray with me wherever you are? Just bow your heads and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come to you right now and we thank you so much for the privilege as we follow you, Jesus, of living a led life in the midst of the confusion, all the voices that speak to us, we have this wonderful privilege that we get to identify the voice of the Holy Spirit leading us. And I thank you that you lead us in the midst of this world and all of the pain and all of the chaos, and yes, all the evil that is in this world. We have the opportunity to look for those places where we can bring your goodness and your grace. And we just simply pray, Lord, as we live this life following you, that we'd all move to a new place of this led life. Holy Spirit, lead us. We want your voice to be familiar to us. We want want to, to know that voice deep in our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that we as individuals, as we gather together for worship, that we'd come together expecting to be in your presence and to experience your manifest presence because in your presence, (laughs) you know, we're healed. We're touched. We're directed. We find rest. We find peace. We find this clear uh, direction for decisions we have to make when we just come and are in your presence. So I pray that that would um, be exactly what we experience as a church body every time we gather together. Lord, we pray this. We thank you for this. We pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for attending our online worship today. It's, it's just great that you're, you're watching. And a um, couple things, we, we want to pray for you. It's such a privilege to pray for you. And if you just uh, click on the link you see, how can we pray for you? If you will let us know your prayer request, then this coming week, there will be a number of faith-filled people who will pray for you and your need. I promise you, it's a privilege to do that. And if you let us know. And also, if the Lord spoke to you today, touched your heart in a way, if you open your heart to Jesus today, I'd love to hear your story. So you can send me an email at rod at oakhillschurch.net. I'd love to read about your story, and then I'd love to pray for you. So do that. I'd really appreciate it. Finally, um, we're going to continue in this series next week, the series called The Life. And we're going to talk about um, that we can expect when we follow Jesus to be aware And, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, just don't believe that there is a battle going on in the unseen world, that there actually is evil in the world. A lot of people just don't want to believe that. You read the Bible, it's pretty clear there is. And there is a battle going on in the unseen world, in the spiritual realm. And when we follow Jesus, we can expect that we will become aware of that, that battle that's going on and Not only will we be aware, but we'll be prepared to to battle that and to fight in that battle and to win and to overcome. And that's our message next week. And so I hope you'll join us. Either uh, attend online or attend right here at Oak Hills Church Sunday morning at 930. God bless you. Thanks for watching today.